and this is what we often do um, for a couple of reasons, uh, but almost every time you do something, you use Excel. Um, one of the reasons uh, to do um, carbon footprint or LCA in Excel is uh, to do it on this level I call element level. So you saw the first introduction in IRE, it was like cement on the material kind of level, and that software is quite uh, good for that. Uh, and sub elements of products like we know many different types of materials. It's quite useful with Kanta. Uh, and the whole building, many materials again, one click, as you will see afterwards, it's quite useful. But uh, if you wanted like on like sub elements, couple of building materials together, uh, I think Excel is often quite nice to use. Um, and in these cases, you might want to uh, look at different combination of materials on the same kind of um, requirements for fire or structural or uh, acoustics. And also in some assessment, uh, been looking at like a cladding or floor which need maintenance. Uh, and you have different scenarios for maintenance that could also be something nice to model in Excel. Um, how you do it is that you get um, carbon footprint or emission factors. Uh, you can probably get this from Gamta or IRE, but there's also some uh, sources online. For instance, there is one uh, database from Finland uh, called co2data.fi, which has a lot of carbon footprints on generic uh, building materials. And we also have one database we're building up in Norway called Norenviro. Um, but uh, if you want to have it from a specific uh, producer or window, you can also use environmental product declarations and then just get the uh, data from there. Um, yeah, so these are EPDs and they're having the carbon footprint uh, for one specific product and the data is verified. So this is also a source. And um, this is one example of how you can do um, L LCA with um, Excel. And this is from a report uh, or actually a master or bachelor thesis, I'm not to remember, where they looked at different types of decking in a building and if they should use wood or concrete. And when you compare these solutions, it's not just about the um, load bearing structure, but also the sound requirements. Because for wood, it's very lightweight, so you need to add more uh, to get um, the right um, sound requirements or to reduce the noise between the floors. So the additional materials uh, for soundproofing can be very important for the results. Uh, I'm not finished, but uh, I'm finished with uh, <laughs> with what I'm presenting. So I will just show um, some examples. So um, I will start with uh, yesterday. We uh, had the training with uh, BIM. And then it's possible to do something we call schedule and to get data from the BIM. And this is what I got yesterday. Because I, I, I was drawing a, a building and some walls. And then I got out the, um, all the walls and the area. So um, with this data, you have Wall one, 300 square meters and 629, 300 and 629. 
So then I will know that the whole building has about 1800 square meters of walls. Um, but then you need to know how much is the impact per square meter. And then we have uh, this EPD of the wall. So this is uh, a wall element. Uh, it's called a sandwich element. And it's uh, with steel and insulation. And you can see here it follows um, the standard EN 15804. And then it's, and it's verified, so you should be able to trust this data. And uh, it, in the general information, it will um, say something where it's made. Uh, but it, one of the important part is the unit. And has written that it's one square meter. So that fits quite well with the data I have of it, the amount of square meters of walls. And it's used for roofing or, or wall. It also has uh, different parts. Some EPDs doesn't have the whole life cycle. Uh, but at least we should look at the product phase, the manufacturing, A1283. It's um, also written about the weight and the thickness. And the most, you see there is a lot of numbers, but the most used number it's this one. And that's the carbon footprint of a manufacturing the product. And so uh, it's 45 um, kilos. One, two. So if we want to do LCA of the wall on this building, not sure what this means, but uh, yeah see if I can do without. So we have 45.2 streets per um, meter. And then we have uh, the hundred Oh, uh, that didn't work. <laughs> uh, oh, it has to be in. Yeah. Yeah. So then we'll get the carbon footprint to making the materials for the wall. So um, the benefit with this is that you can you can use data that is available online and combine it uh, quite straightforward. Um, I have um, another example.
So uh, this I'm uh, actually currently working on. Uh, this is in Norwegian, but it's um, a list of building uh, elements and how to categorize them. And this is uh, from a standard and uh, that is uh, going to be in the building code on how you need to uh, calculate the carbon footprint of buildings, which is will be required for all uh, larger buildings. Um, and this is like foundation and walls and superstructure and de deckings and or slabs and roofs. Um, and what we have done then is that um, I got these uh, numbers um, from the BIM. Uh, ask the architects how many square meters of slabs do you have in the building and then you get the square meters from all the floors. Uh, and then I knew from the drawing how this uh, the floors are built up. So you will have uh, parquet flooring and you will have some screed materials. You will have um, um, like um, sound insulation, uh, and you will have the um, uh, CLT, cross laminated timber, and then there's also some space with um, uh, insulation also for sound, and then gypsum boards. And what you do then is to get, you calculate this for one square meter, <clears throat> and then you get EPDs for all these type of materials. And then you can calculate how, many, how much impact it is from one square meter and multiply it by the whole uh, building. That takes a little bit of time, so I will not do it now. But um, I will show just one more example. And that's um, when you're finished with the LCA. And you can do this, uh, we'll show later in one click. Uh, Dorian will do that. Uh, it's not necessarily that the software will show it as you want it to look like in a report. But then we also use uh, Excel just to make uh, graphs. And this is um, from the Norwegian standard, the different types of uh, building elements. So the groundwork, load bearing, external and inner walls. And then we have uh, done the carbon footprint for all um, the materials and for the product phase and transport and installation and also um, main maintenance or replacement of materials. Um, and then we have done this um, for each square meter per year. So you take the whole building and divide it uh, with the square meters and the number of years, uh, which is 50 in, typically in the standards. And then you know how much impact you will have from the different uh, parts of the building. And in this case, uh, you can see that um, uh, load bearing quite important or the outer walls, the elements that I showed, they're also quite important because they are uh, replaced during the use. So um, yeah, this is some ways we actually use Excel for LCA in practice. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, so that EPD you show, it was from England. From it, it was made in the United Kingdom. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, for example, in Norway and Spain, yeah. can be useful just because the, the mixture of source of energy is completely different. Yeah, I think from for these elements, they're, they're not made in Norway, they're imported. Yeah, okay, but, you know, it's like, yeah. If we know, for example, something is 
Yeah. Um, it, it didn't come from that source. It didn't come from the UK. It's yeah. reducing the space. So, but yeah. it is different completely, and the results are all, all different. It, could, it depends a little bit. So, so, some materials is more or less dependent on the country, but some are not so dependent. So, for like, um, some are more dependent on the raw materials again, which could be from another place. Uh, but uh, so it some materials it depends a little bit and some not so much. Uh, what you do in practice is that um, if you don't have anything else, you use it, and then you see on when you've done the calculations, is it important or not? So if it's like the external walls, like you can see here, it's probably quite important for results. So then, OK, you should check it more. But if it was like for inner walls and it was uh, maybe some part and it's very small, then you don't bother to use more time on it. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you.